was born in Wembley. In the early 60s, as a family, we had very little or no money. So I didn't dream big dreams when I was a child. Life at home was tough. My parents were divorced when I was three. I'm dyslexic. I can't process sounds, so school was a struggle. So I guess as a kid, that's most of life. Um, but I'm not dyslexic with numbers. Numbers were really clear. Studying with no cash at all, money was, was everything to me. When we started the business in 1981, I had no idea about the toy industry. A toy shop came on the market in Amersham. We uh, managed to convince the bank that we were a good bet. Gary has always been well known for being very enthusiastic, driven, I guess, to succeed. Success was a main goal. Making money, bigger and better things was really the only objective in being in business. So in 10 years we had three shops and now 35 years later we have 120 stores and several franchises around the world. So in the first 10 years of being in business I'm not sure we had too many company values. I think it was all about making money. Well, I'd always been a churchgoer all my life, and I'd had friends that were really strong Christians, but I, I hadn't really seen the whole picture, that's all I can say. And then one particular morning, I absolutely saw it, and I really felt the spirit, and it was just like nothing was ever the same. For about three years, I was an extremely antagonistic, non-Christian husband. I didn't mind her believing what she wanted to believe, but I felt we were living in a modern world and life is all about business, making money, and actually this old-fashioned mindset um, was a bit like a history lesson and it was irrelevant. So my prayer for Gary was that he would find the Lord, but never in a million years did I believe he actually would. <laughs> Just as we were about to open our third shop, Kath had bought me a ticket for a Christian men's breakfast at her church. And I went along and the speaker at this men's breakfast was just talking about a relationship that he had with Jesus and how the Holy Spirit can influence our life, guide us, can turn situations around. And I, thought, I sat there with disbelief thinking, well, if any of this is true, there must be something in this. As I say, I was 33, I'd never been to church by myself before ever, and I'm at the back thinking I'm quite successful, in a big house, a couple of Mercedes cars, in the back of church crying. And that was, that was the turning point. I mean, it's like, what on earth had happened? And God just got me. He was just completely changed overnight, and that's just how Gary is. When he goes for something, he goes at it 100%. Overnight, we changed our thoughts on what we should stock in the shop, the kind of um, hours our staff should work, whether we allowed bad language in the warehouse. Gary's not a great reader, but he did start reading the Bible. He loves Proverbs because it's short and sweet, and he can get the message straight away. And he also had the benefit of some really good Christian men alongside him that had known him for years and were just really excited to see the change in him. When I became a Christian in 1991, we had to look at this whole area of company values. How were we going to treat our customers, our suppliers, and our staff differently? And how could I put into play on an everyday basis what I now believed? It completely changed the way I approached business. When Cass suggested that we ought to consider giving, that was, that was a bit of a challenge. He was like, my money, I've earned it. We're building a business. Don't see why I should give it to the church. As a person who grew up with nothing, the concept of giving money away, it, it, that wasn't on my radar. The thing is about money, it's probably the one thing that we might want to hold on to the most. And when we can trust God and we can start to see the joy and the difference that, that money can make, actually, once you start, you just keep going. It's, it's almost as though life opened up. It just became so much more exciting. I knew that generosity was part of my spiritual journey. Because I think the company values and the company culture mirror the, the Grant family's own personal values, generosity has played such an important part in how the business 
operates on a day-to-day -day basis. We want to be really intentional about our charitable giving. And when our company budget is put together every year, we have an expense line called donations. But it's a built-in cost. Rent, rates, labour, they're built-in costs, so are donations and charitable giving. I felt that it was important for me to try and facilitate wider generosity. And we introduced, about five years ago, payroll giving. Payroll giving is a way for the staff in the business to give money to charity through their monthly wage packet. And maybe this is the first time they've ever given to a charity on a regular basis. I wanted to encourage my staff to be generous. So I made a decision that we would match their monthly donation to a charity that they chose. And today, 45% of the entertainer's staff give monthly to a charity of their choice. I think uh, the business is a great opportunity to show generosity and I think if people see it they can see that it's actually quite easy to do and once you encourage people to get on that journey then they want to join in and they want to do it. Would you like to donate 40 pence to Great Ormond Street Hospital? It's green for yes, red for no. One of the most exciting things we've launched at The Entertainer is pennies. Pennies is an amazing charity um, that we, we run in store. Basically, customers come into the store, they make a purchase. If they are using credit cards, we offer them the option to round up to the nearest pound. That money actually then gets donated to, for, for us, it's Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital, something set up that's so easy. They just have to hit one button and that's it. They then become part of generosity. The average donation over the last four and a half years we've been running pennies in the stores is 39p but it's added up to an unbelievable 1.2 million pounds. And the most amazing thing is, customers in the shop compliment us for doing it, and yet we're taking their money off them. It is amazing. When I look back at my legacy, will I be more proud of the business that we've built, the money that we've made, or the people's lives in which we've been able to impact? Businesses have got a tremendous potential to be able to make a difference to society. So we're a toy retailer, we earn our money from families and we, wherever we can, we give back to children um, so we can make a difference in children's lives. We had a dream to help families that were struggling and families that have fallen off the bottom rung of the ladder of hope. Restore Hope Latimer has enabled us to put our dream into action. Restore Hope Latimer is a Christian charity uh, that was set up in uh, 2002 um, by the trustees, uh, Kathy and Gary Grant and a number of others, really with the purpose of reaching and, and meeting the needs of young people, children and families through the use of the land here. Most of them have got different issues and different needs in their lives. Some of them have come from very disadvantaged backgrounds. Many of them are in families that are really struggling with relationships. So it just really helps them coming down here, get them connected in, find their purpose and realise what real life is all about. Gary and I ourselves struggled when we were little. Different reasons, circumstances were different, but in the end we were the bottom of the picking pile. You now see him down here and he connects with the children because he lived what they're living, he knows what they've been through. And uh, I think with Gary, as he's given into the charity and given into his business and given into relationships, there's a deep pleasure in, in giving. And I think you can't buy that, that's not, not buyable, it's something to do with the heart. It's a heart connection of wanting to give into these lives and so into the future. We just love seeing what money can do. Money can do so much when it's active. It's not active in the bank, is it? It's not active in a new car or a house. It's active when you're out there, changing someone's day, changing someone's life, giving someone an ambition for their future they've never glimpsed before. I think Gary believes now that you can't outgive God. I think we've had so many examples of giving and seeing more blessing pour into our family because of that giving, that it doesn't scare us to give now because it just all comes back as blessing.